Is a $20 diamond sharpening stone any good? Yes and no. You see, it depends on what exactly you're doing. This is a good rough profiling stone, but that's about it. If you're looking for a cheap way to reprofile, remove chips, or do any rough grinding work, this is a great option for $20. The 1000 grit side isn't really fine enough to give you super great edges. Let me explain why. Out of the box, the stone looked better than expected, with nice even diamond coverage, and the stone was also very flat. Very flat. I've seen other diamond plated stones that were much more expensive that didn't look nearly as nice out of the packaging. After an initial break in period of sharpening about 20 knives, the stone settled into a nice consistent grind. Diamond stones will have a break in period where the poorly adhered diamonds on the surface will break off. These poorly adhered diamonds will give the stone a very coarse feel right out of the box. But once it's used a number of times, the stone will break into a much more consistent state. After break in, I did a quick demonstration on how quickly the stone will sharpen. Everybody says that I need to have a warning before I do this. On the bottom right, you can see the timer. And the knife being sharpened is a two tool steel at 62 HRC from a completely dull state. I completed the same test with a larger, cheap stainless kitchen knife with similar results. As you can see, this stone is super coarse, and that's how I classify it. Yes, both sides, both the 400 and the 1000. Here's a close-up of the 400 grit scratch pattern. And here's a close-up of the 1000. And yes, I am 100% positive this is correct. I double and triple checked that these pictures are of the correct grit. And for a comparison, here is a Shapton Kormaku 1000 grit scratch pattern. So why does the 400 look an awful lot like the 1000? Well, let's take a look. Here's the surface of the 400 grit diamond stone. And here's the surface of the 1000 grit diamond stone. Upon initial inspection, it looks quite a bit finer. However, once you look a little bit closer, you'll see that there is some major grit contamination on the surface of the 1000. These large spots are actually larger pieces of grit embedded into the surface. Even though these look widely spaced out, remember, we're looking super close. So in reality, they are very close together. These larger pieces are what's giving the very coarse scratch pattern we see when we look close up. This grit contamination is very common in dual-sided, dual-grit, diamond-plated sharpening stones. I can't comment on the long-term durability of the stone, and we'll have to report back after a year to see how it's holding up. I will say that based on my knowledge of how these are made, it seems that they are put together fairly well, with the surface being flat, the diamonds being evenly distributed, and the plating being the correct thickness to hold the abrasives in place. Again, based on my knowledge of diamond abrasives, I'm 99% certain these are polycrystalline diamonds, which do wear out faster than the more expensive monocrystalline diamond. However, as long as you don't put these to extreme pressure when sharpening or use water on the surface, the polycrystalline diamonds do last quite a while. But again, I'll have to report back after several hundred uses. If you are looking for a cheap profiling stone, this stone will do the job. However, if you are looking for a good 1000 grit edge with a coarse profiling side included, better save your money. This stone is made in China where they can manufacture things at about a third of the cost over a made in USA stone. In this case, I think you get what you pay for. For $20, you get a good profiling stone, but don't expect too much for $20.